I first heard of Rusty back in 2014, hearing Madion play his song Slasher at Newer SFR in Paris. Later on, Madion will also play his song Big Cats in some of his sets, which blew my mind the first time I heard it. Such a simple track with such power. I later on found out that Porter Robinson and Flume, two of my biggest influences in music, had made their own versions of these songs. Slasher itself recently turned 10 years old, and its influence on the electronic music landscape has been immeasurable, with even Flume making his own edit of it which he played in his shows in 2016. Rusty is a name that has become almost legendary in the electronic music scene, a name that has been around for many years. It is the stage name of Russell David White, the Scottish producer who has had a prolific impact on the electronic, IDM, hip-hop and bass music scenes. He is credited as being the inspiration behind many prolific artists and producers today such as G. Jones, Wave Dash, Arab Music, Glassy and more. Rusty has put out such classic tracks such as Slasher, Big Cats, Attack and Ultra Thiz as well as a whole host of unreleased material that is still talked about to this day almost as much as his released stuff. Welcome to episode 4 of Cult Figures in Music, a series where I talk passionately about music artists and producers that I have a special soft spot for. These are artists that I believe are very unique with their music they make, but it's not just the music that they make, it's also the entire audio-visual world that they create that surrounds them whether it's their live shows, DJ sets, the visuals, the music videos, the art, the social media content, the promotional stuff, etc. Rusty is a music producer hailing from Glasgow in Scotland, with releases dating back to 2007. In his time, he has released three albums, numerous EPs and singles, as well as some remixes and edits. Rusty's unreleased catalogue has also taken on a life of its own, and while none of these old tracks are likely to ever be released, they are praised by many fans and fellow producers, some of which hold these to be better than the stuff he has released. Many of these unreleased tracks have come from mixes, most notably his BBC Radio Essential mix from 2012, with a few people such as Dubplate Flurry and Hudson Lotus cutting these unreleased gems from the mixes they were played in and re-uploading them individually. This video today will be focusing on Rusty's released discography, but I will do a separate video detailing all his unreleased music as it's equally as fascinating as what he has officially given us. While his releases go back to 2007, he has been playing shows since at least 2005 at the earliest. A recording of a show he did back in 2005 with Jackmaster has been up on Jackmaster's SoundCloud for many years now. The set was recorded from vinyl to mini disc via the DJM 600 mixer they used in the set. Prior to his explosion in popularity in 2010, Rusty put out a few EPs, remixes and some collaborative tracks with Joker, a big name from the UK dubstep scene at the time. Through 2007 to 2009, Rusty released the Bad Science EP as well as the double-sided release with Joker, Play-Doh and Tempered as well as an EP with the rap duo 215 The Freshest Kids, featuring four tracks and three instrumental versions on the instrumental side. We also got the Jags The Smack EP, Rusty's first EP, and my personal favourite track from this era, Zigzag. Alongside these releases, we also got a remix of Mode Selector in 2008 and Zombie in 2009. 2010 was the year Rusty broke out into the public eye with his first major release, this was the year that Rusty signed to the legendary Warp Records and had his first release on the label on October 4th that year with the Sunburst EP. The EP featured six tracks, the tracks being Neko, Dragonfly, Beast Knight, Chew, Hyperthrust and Star Wolf. On August 28th of 2011, Rusty put out the first single for Glass Swords, his upcoming debut album. The track was called All Night, and it featured a simple vocal with Rusty's signature punchy snares and a simple but effective super soul melody and a dirty mid-range bass line. The track was followed by a double release on September 5th with Ultra Thiz and the non-album single Dreams. Something to note about Rusty is he is also known for putting multiple Zs at the end of many of his song titles titles, particularly on Glass Swords in his 2015 album Even If You Don't Believe. Ultra Thiz starts off with a quiet clapping build-up which explodes into a huge synth chorus with drums synced up with the melody, which is incredibly effective. Dreams is a slower track with a very bright sparkly synth all the way through the track. On October 10th 2011, Rusty released his debut album Glass Swords. Considered to be a classic in the electronic music scene, 
This album featured 13 tracks, all very consistent in terms of sound, production and energy. The album was actually a grower for me. Originally I wasn't too crazy about it, most of the songs just didn't really hit for me except for Ultra Thiz, and the only other song that stood out was Cry Flames. After a while of coming back to this album after the 10th anniversary of it and seeing G. Jones tweet about how this album was so important and inspiring for him, I started to really enjoy it much more. On a side note, like G. Jones and Eprom's Acid Disc 2 EP, Glass Swords also features artwork by Jonathan Zawada. This Crack Magazine interview on the 10th anniversary of Glass Swords with Jonathan Zawada goes into more detail on how the artwork came about, and Jonathan also showed some sketches and alternative cover artworks made for the album before its release. The next year, on the 4th of April 2012, Rusty played his BBC Radio Essential Mix. A two hour long mix filled with tracks from Tonight, Clams Casino, S-Type, Cashmere Cat, Bauer, Sirkin and many more, along with unreleased tracks and demos from Rusty himself. I still see people talk about this essential mix even today, it's become almost as famous as Rusty himself. In 2012 we also got two new versions of the tracks Surf and After Light from Glass Swords. Both new versions featured vocals from Aluna George and Night Wave. In 2013, Rusty may not have released much, but what he did release could be arguably one of the most influential dance tracks of all time. On the 4th of March 2013, Rusty had his new double release on the label Numbers. The label responsible for some big releases over the years from Hudson Mohawk, Redeen Ho, Jamie XX, Jack Master, and of course, Sophie's acclaimed product compilation. While that's an impressive list of names for a small Glasgow-based label, the list of names who have DJed Slasher is even more impressive. And as if that wasn't enough, Flume made his own edit of the track, which he played prominently during his Skin album live show. However, this edit was also played by... Slasher was the smash hit of Rusty's career. It's easily his most played song live, and the first song that has come to mind when most people think of Rusty. It seemed like everyone and their mum has DJed Slasher at some point. Personally, I first heard the song in Madion's 2014 New SFR show in Paris, where he played it after Wave Race's song Streamers, which if you like Slasher, I'd recommend checking out Streamers. The very next year, Rusty would have another big hit track, but I'd argue that it wasn't anywhere near as influential as Slasher was. In 2013, there was a track released by Fact Magazine called Boats as well as a track on the Lucky Me advent calendar that year called Terra Star. In 2014, Rusty would unveil his next album, Green Language, an evolution of his sound and his first album to have featured vocalists. Rusty clearly leaned a little more towards the hip-hop audience for this album, with features from rap group Gorgeous Children and also d e and most famously Danny Brown. Attack, the track that features Danny Brown, was the big single for the album, and easily Rusty's most popular song in his whole discography. The song had a music video featuring Danny Brown rapping with lyrics animated on screen, which at the time of this video has over 5 million views. The song was also featured in Watch Dogs 2 on one of the radio stations in-game. Alongside Attack were the two singles Raptor and Lost. Raptor is one of my favourite Rusty tracks for the fact that it's a little more of a weird one, kind of like the song Hover Traps off his first album. It's got these really strange synthesized sounds that somehow work while sounding weird. In the first and last build up, the song also has a sound that reminds me of the main synth sound in Stardust's Music Sounds Better With You. The final single for the album, Lost, was the one that featured Redinho, which later on had a VIP version Rusty temporarily put up as a free download on his SoundCloud. Later on in 2014, Rusty put out the Green Language Swisher House Edits EP, which featured five remixes of songs off the album by Mike 5000 Watts. At the end of 2014, as part of the Lucky Me advent calendar, Rusty's edit of A.G. Cook Beautiful was released. As if the original wasn't enough, Rusty brings his own take to it, and he sure does bring a lot new to the table, turning the track into a pop slash trap banger. And on the topic of remixes and edits, 
Rusty has had many remixes over the years that you probably didn't know about. In 2015, he did do a remix for Skrillex and Diplo for their Jack Yu song with Justin Bieber, but he has also done remixes for people like Joker, fellow Warp Records label mate Jamie Liddell, Gamma, Big Dope P, Lunas, Mode Selector, Sebastian, Sirkin, Gucci Mane, Zombie, Block Party, Daedalus, and Pusha T and Tyler the Creator. Now we come to 2015, and even if you don't believe it, I think this is Rusty's best album. The one I feel that has the most visible influence, and what I believe is Rusty's best music. Even if you don't believe, has a great variety of tracks for an electronic album. With such strong energy at the high points, and some lower points that really make the high points feel even bigger. That being said, the lower points are still spectacular and feel very distinctly rusty. When it comes to this album, it's really hard to pick a favourite or standout track, as this album is so high quality from front to back. But the track that has stuck with me for a long time is Big Cats, as it was my first rusty song I ever heard, and it holds a special place for me. This album features huge anthems such as Your Goddess, 444 Sure, and the aforementioned Big Cats, as as well as some beautiful moments with the track Open Hearts, featuring a huge epic emotional synth with high-pitched choirs and sparkly arpeggios. With this big release also came some bad news. Rusty posted on social media that he had been hospitalised for diabetes. However, he did not let being bedbound stop him from making new music. In this time he uploaded 160 hospital rhythm to his SoundCloud, as well as a bunch of demo tracks from 2003. Rusty also announced in December that he was cancelled cancelling all future shows due to his ongoing issues with substance abuse, addiction and mental health. In the years since 2015, not much has happened with Rusty publicly. Even If You Don't Believe got a vinyl and CD release the following year in February, with the vinyl including an exclusive bonus track called Dual Key, Rusty made an exception to the post he made in December 2015 and played one show for the Numbers Plus Warp party at the Glasgow School of Art in 2017. In 2019, Hudson Mohawk and Lunas played Rusty's unreleased song Tartaria for their Tonight BBC Radio Essential mix. In 2020, Rusty posted a video to Facebook on April 1st, seemingly leading a lot of people to believe a new project may be coming soon, but most seem to be conflicted as the post was made on April Fool's Day. The video was a short, slow-mo video of nature with a new song playing in the background. As it was uploaded to Facebook, the quality of the audio was not very high, although I have seen people say that the audio leaked in FLAC file format. Ultimately, nothing came of the video, and it's probably likely that it was an April Fool's prank. Unfortunately, here's where I also have to mention the controversy that Rusty caused. On Facebook in 2020, Rusty shared some sentiments to imply an anti-vax stance, and posted medical and political conspiracy theories. This caused an uproar from many who disagreed with the views Rusty posted. Rusty followed up with a post stating, quote, I am suffering, I am not in good health, and I miss my family. My heart goes out to everyone affected by this situation. I'm sorry for upsetting setting so many people, but I hope you can see where I'm coming from, and I wish you all nothing but the best." End quote. Most have speculated and attributed this behaviour to Rusty's mental health disorder, which goes back to his posts in December 2015 regarding his mental health. In 2022, Rusty had a surprise show in Glasgow, which many people believed was going to be the start of something new for Rusty. The show was on at Sub Club and hosted by Numbers on the 2nd of December 2022. No one recorded the show in full, unfortunately, but there were clips that surfaced on social media. As for 2023, Rusty started off the year with what looked to be the start of a real comeback, with the new Instagram, TikTok and Twitter accounts created with the handle Rusty808. All had the words soon written in the bios, as well as a link to a new link tree. Rusty also posted the lineup poster for the Project 6 festival he was booked for on his Instagram story. It looked like it was finally the time. Finally, Rusty was making the big comeback people had been excited for for years, but it wouldn't be long for everyone's hopes to come crashing down. Like his older social media, the new social media accounts Rusty created all got deleted, with only the link tree remaining. However, that too would eventually disappear. What's more, as confirmed by Project 6 on Instagram, both Rusty and Hudson Mohawk would pull out of the festival and were promptly removed from the lineup poster. This leaves us with the question, is this the end of Rusty? Despite the 
the fact that this artist has had a significant impact on electronic music, it doesn't mean that he is obliged to provide his fans with new music. However, the fact that Soon was written in the bio of his Twitter, Instagram and Facebook profiles indicate that fans should hold out hope that one day when this legend is ready he will return with more music. I guess we will just have to wait and see. Thank you for watching. Sorry about the long wait between videos, I've had a whole lot of IRL stuff pop up in my life recently, but I should be back to making videos a little bit more consistently from now on. My last video I put out was a video on a unknown song from Hudson Mohawk, which I'm actually really really proud of, so you could check that out, I'll link that in the cards for you at the end of the video here. I'm also starting a new Patreon, so tell me what you'd like to see on there when it comes to rewards and tiers. Let me know in the comment section below. That's about it. Now be sure to like and subscribe and all the other things that everyone on this platform tells you to do. I'll see you next time.